well, uh, I, as you've seen, I filmed myself at the time in '86, and um, in 2013, I watched this material again with some young people who haven't been alive during the Balkan affair. Do you have to translate or? No, no. no. Okay, okay. Do not worry. Uh, so, and they were quite shocked by this populism and anti Semitism in the streets of Vienna. Um, and they asked many questions and they said it's so important, you should make a film, you should make a film. So, uh, in the beginning I said, no, why should I make a film? I've been there myself. Uh, but then I started to do research and I discovered many interesting things I didn't know at the time. And I decided to make a film to put, it, to put this affair in an international context, not only Austrian, the Austrian side of it, in Austrian television, but the confrontation of, of the different gazes on this affair. Uh, I'm curious to know the reaction, of the, the reaction of the people after the screening, especially in Austria, of course. I cannot tell you because the film will be released in autumn. Okay. So it has only been in Berlin, and as you know, it was very well received. Got the, the main award there, and it was screened at other festivals, but not uh, yet in Austria and Germany in, in regular cinemas. But your film was a nice success at Berlin Yeah, yeah. Yes. Are you satisfied with the reaction of the people over there? Of course, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought there would be more interest here because actually this is the place where Mr. Waldheim and Lehr and other Austrian soldiers have been very active. Uh, by the way, uh, did you receive uh, any kind of protest from any member of his big family up to this film? They didn't see the film yet. Oh, really? Are you sure? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm quite sure. I don't know and I don't care, I must say. I, mean, uh, I didn't ask them, so I, didn't, I don't know them, I didn't meet them. And he was a public figure and he was the general secretary of the highest organization and he was Austrian president, so uh, his family is his family, but he was a public figure. Uh, for how long you did collect your material, especially old footage material? A long time. I, was, uh, I started in 2013 and first uh, I uh, watched a lot in, in Austrian TV archive for months and months, because I wanted to see as much as possible the whole year of 86, 87, and, and a lot. And then I, I, I went to the BBC and we collected other material. But the longest work took place in the Austrian TV archives. We got so many hours of material and finally started the editing with about 200 hours. So this was, the, the first selection was 200 hours. Okay. You didn't have any restrictions to use it? Only financial restrictions, <laughs> because um, the American uh, material was very expensive. No, but I, I could get whatever I wanted. There, were no, there was no censorship in that sense. And I was very lucky because um, actually it's horrible to, to work with TV archives because they, I don't know how it is here in, in Serbia, but in Austria for instance, and in most of the countries, they keep only in the archive what was on air, what was transmitted. So, Sometimes you had to deal with 30 seconds, so with 10 seconds of a clip, clips, short clips, which is terrible for editing a film. But luckily they had kept this amazing um, a hearing with the son of Waldheim. Will you remember? Yes. 
so there they had kept the whole material half an hour or something like or even more. So this was pretty luck because I think this is very interesting. <laughs> uh, your film is a film about truths and lies, about irony of the history, about political blindness, about fake gains. But for me, the most important question is what to do with that knowledge? <laughs> this is a question I cannot answer. I mean, uh, this is, uh, you see, I mean, the Weidem affair was very important for Austria. It was a turning point in <coughs> the way Austria thinks about itself and its history. Because till the mid 80s, Austria said, sold itself as the first victim of the German Nazis. And with the Weitem affair, there started to be a completely different thinking, thought about it. I mean, lots of projects, research is done, and today uh, Austria wouldn't say that it was a victim, but it was a perpetrator. It was guilty as the Germans were. So this was very important. It was also the beginning of civil society. The people you see in the end of the film, they came out uh, and spoke out, and still do. And for instance, this old woman, in the end, she was a resistance fighter, and she was in Ravensburg camp. And many people like her were in the dark before. They didn't speak in public. So, because of my time, uh, this changed and they came out to speak, to go to schools, to... Now, most of them are dead, but it was very important. It was a, a very important turning point for Austria. Uh, I really like and I really do respect the sense of humor in your work. And it's a very important element in your general work. Do you agree with me? Yeah, that's a wonderful compliment. <laughs> I think it doesn't, I mean, we have to, it doesn't make sense if we are sad and depressed uh, in our lives. We have to act and to enjoy life. I mean, but to be politically aware and, and active, but at the same time, it doesn't make sense to be depressed by someone like my time. I mean, ugly old man. So. <laughs> Please be so kind and join us with your question now. Huh? How do you think the themes that you explored in your film uh, resonate in today's recent elections in Europe and some of the democratic elections that have taken place in Germany and Hungary? Can you respond to that? Yeah, it's kind of sad that the film is so... Uh, up to date. I mean, as I said, I started uh, four years ago and there was no Trump, there was Orban, but there was no Strache in our country and Kurz and all these other AFD guys and so on. I mean, I didn't, this was not my, <laughs> my fault. Huh? But of course, the film came in the right moment. Uh, so, what is good for a film is not good for life sometimes and history, well, uh, it's like a big backlash, I think, and uh, nobody knows what, I mean, I don't want to be too pessimistic, but it uh, doesn't look so good right now in Europe and the States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making this a uh, beautiful, brilliant and very important film, uh, which gave me an enormous amount of new knowledge, I'm not from Austria. I was wondering, the key point seemed to be the clip uh, of the World Jewish Congress uh, of Israel Singer, and he said um, that a historian discovered new material about Waldheim, and I was wondering if you know what triggered the uh, historian from the University of South Carolina. And I was wondering if you know what triggered his initial interest uh, 
in the biography of all time? Um, I don't think that this historian uh, was the first one who did, did research. But um, actually the German, the Austrian, maybe also people here in Serbia, but this Austrian journalist whom you've seen in the end, Janine, uh, Janine uh, he got some information and he went to the Austrian um, state archives and found this document that he was a member of the Nazi youth movement and this uh, was group. <laughs> so that's, that was the beginning of it. I mean, we, there are many rumors who triggered it and, uh, you know, these are rumors, it doesn't, it's not important. Somehow someone had an idea and uh, a suspicion and then people started research. And do you think it had to do with time? Yeah, as I say in this one part of the film, I ask uh, why so late? Why in the mid-80s? And um, my explanation is, uh, is uh, that this was almost the end of the Cold War, the archive, some archives opened, and uh, the Holocaust wasn't really such an important subject before. Uh, till the 80s it was more about resistance and the allies and um, the partisans and so other groups who have been victims like the Jews or the Roma or the homosexuals haven't been in focus of public interest. And I think, as you as you've seen, it's Reagan, President Reagan, had been in Germany and went to these SS graves. This was a big scandal already, but this was in '85. So in the in the when Walter became General Secretary of the UN in the beginning of the '70s, I don't know if they checked him that thoroughly, if anybody was really interested in what he had done. In, during the war. He was not a big Nazi, maybe he wasn't a Nazi, but he was a liar. So... <laughs> and he said that his friends applied for him hmm? to, to check in in Nazi party. He says that his friends applied. Oh, yeah. He said his friends applied for him, yeah. which is good. Yeah. yeah, friends or cousins. Yeah. Yeah. He even, as you see in the film, even when he was confronted with the facts, he tried to find evade. his way. Yeah, wait. Uh, Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you for spreading the truth. This is a very rare opportunity for me. Um, I was in the school during the time of Tito's reign. And we all know that he had a fantastic intelligence service, as all other dictators. It is fairly unnecessary, uh, impossible, the fact that he didn't know anything about Kurt Waldheim. It is an irony. He asked him whether you've been here, and he asked not, and Tito stays calm. But uh, did you try to connect, to, to stay in, in, uh, in, in any kind of connection with anybody in Tito's uh, uh, intelligence service to give you some of facts about one of very important collaborator or general von Lerr. We all know from our history book who was general von Lerr and he was very important. So it is what, uh, fairly for me, uh, uh, it is less uh, unlikely, uh, less likely possible that anybody in the written documents in our historical archive they didn't find the name of Kurt Waldheim. Yeah, they finally found it, but they only started to search very late. But you're right, probably or maybe Tito and the Yugoslav secret intelligence knew about Vata. That's, that's one of the rumors 
and uh, maybe they blackmailed him, maybe they, you know, I mean, it was the 70s and it was the, the policy of the, how do you call it, the Blockfreie, the, the not aligned countries. Uh, the third world plus Yugoslavia and others. They may, that was their, that was their, their coming out. I mean, many countries became independent at the time and so on. So maybe, and why time uh, supported this polis, politics. And one of his closest collaborators was from Yugoslavia. So maybe, yeah, but you know, I didn't want to go into this because this is another thing. And it's a film about speculations, because you cannot prove it. I don't think that anyone, and it's not important anymore. I mean, at least for me. Uh, it's, it's very hard to prove uh, what, what intelligence service did on you. What I wanted to point out is that maybe in another part, in another film, you can give us an insight from the, the other side, from the Balkans, from the Thessaloniki, from the Kozara. We all know that Kozara, the 20,000 Serbian children and families were slaughtered. 2,000. 2,000. Kozara was, was a small yes, two, place. Yes, yes. But we all know that, uh, I'm not sure about the number of practices, I don't know, maybe military. Uh, academy has the numbers, <laughs> but we all know that a lot of uh, civilians were slaughtered in, in Bosnia. Uh, so maybe it, was, it will be interesting to see the other part, to hear the, uh, uh, the, the other part, uh, the people from sure, Balkan. Sure, I think that would, yes. be, that would be an opportunity for uh, a Serbian filmmaker to do this, yeah. because um, that's not so easy for me, and for me, of course, the Austrian part was the most important uh, because I prefer to criticize my own country, and I think everybody should do that. And um, yeah, but it, of course, it would be interesting. I don't know if all the archives are open today, and to find out more. And I'm sure one day people will find out more. Yeah. <laughs> but in, Aust in Austria, General Lehr was not known at all. I mean, yeah, of course. But he was hanged here. Thank you. Uh, I He was here at his trial here. Before that. He went to school in Pancho. He here a few years in his youth. Ah. In the city of Pancho. Yes. Ah, possible. Secondary school. He went in secondary school, Pancho Gymnasia. Thank you for the... Hello. I'm sorry. Thank you for this uh, wonderful film. Um, I was wondering, although it falls outside of the time of the film, whether later in his life, full time, reconsidered, repudiated, or changed his story uh, about the things he'd said um, that you uh, cited in the film. Yeah, he didn't really um, explain more. And that's so strange because he was kind of stubborn. He was stuck in this box, so, uh, in this narrative. Only at the very end of his life, he said, I'm sorry, I didn't understand, I should have explained more, and so on. I think if he would have done in the beginning, <coughs> when everything came out, if you would have said, I'm sorry that I didn't write about these two years of my life, and if you would have told the story, then not much would have happened. But he couldn't. We see in the film 
as you say, people speaking up about this. We see that older woman who had remained in the dark, who had been in one of the camps. Did, has Austria, since Waltheim has been out, done anything officially, like programs to educate students about yeah. their role in the Holocaust, about their role during World War II, the way Germany has done? A lot, a lot. I mean, uh, this really was a turning point, as I said before. There are many, many projects uh, in schools, uh, research projects, monuments. I mean, this is common knowledge today, um, with the exception of some stubborn people. But uh, no, most uh, official Austria would say Austria was as guilty as the Germans. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we have time for the last question, please. Sorry. The question of guilt was the last question. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.